Where hot air balloons soar and southwestern culture thrives, this city boasts a rich history, glowing yellow cottonwoods, and mouthwatering cuisine. From breathtaking mountain views to a welcoming community spirit, it's no wonder why visitors can't get enough of this hidden gem in the desert. Scarf down some enchiladas and hop on Route 66, cause we're heading to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Jacob here. Welcome to Destinations Explained, a fun series I do that dives into destinations from around the world. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and comment down below any places I missed. Albuquerque was founded by Spanish colonizers in 1706, back when people thought things like exploration and colonization were totally cool and not at all problematic. The city's name is actually derived from the Spanish word Albuquerque or Twerky or I don't know, which roughly translates to the town with too many vowels. What is this, Wales? For much of its history, Albuquerque was just your average western town. It had cowboys, saloons, and for a while, things were pretty uneventful. There were some skirmishes with the Apache, but let's be honest, who hasn't had a rough day with their neighbors? Fast forward to the 1800s and Albuquerque was finally starting to grow. It became a trading hub for the American Southwest, which was great news for the local economy, but terrible news for anyone who had to transport goods through the city. Have you ever tried to parallel park a wagon full of cacti? It's a nightmare. Then in the 20th century, Albuquerque really started to hit its stride. It became a hotspot for atomic research, which is just about the most Albuquerque thing I can think of, and with the arrival of tech giants like Intel and Facebook, the city quickly became a center of technological progress. The city, of course, was not immune to the problems of the 20th century. There were economic downturns, social turmoil, and even natural disasters. Despite this, Albuquerque has remained a vibrant and resilient city with a distinct culture. Today, Albuquerque has a population of around 550,000 people, with a total metro population of just over 900,000 people. In the summer, the weather can average a high of 91 degrees Fahrenheit to an average low of 67 degrees Fahrenheit, while winter temperatures average a high of 48 degrees Fahrenheit to a low average of 26 degrees Fahrenheit. And be prepared to acclimate, because the city is at an altitude of around 5,300 feet above sea level making it one of the most elevated cities in the country. Let's start our adventure exploring one of Albuquerque's most treasured tourist attractions, a stunning botanical garden that's bursting with life and color. Every type of nature enthusiast will find something to appreciate here, from towering trees to delicate flowers. Put on your walking shoes and come with me as we explore Albuquerque Bio Park Botanic Garden. Immerse yourself in this 36-acre wonderland nestled between the Rio Grande River. This place has a 10,000 square foot conservatory, a fairy tale butterfly pavilion, and many other amazing attractions. Visit the Japanese garden's koi pond, the Mediterranean garden's vibrant blooms, or the desert conservation garden's cacti and succulents. Visitors can also visit the zoo and aquarium next door with combo tickets included in the mission online. Whether you're a nature lover or just looking for a peaceful escape, this is an ideal destination to start your trip in the 505. Up next, we have an open air market bringing the farm to the city that boasts an array of local produce, vibrant art, fresh food, and live music, all in a tight knit community feel. You can find this market located in the historic rail yards, Rail Yards Market. This is the place where you can chill and hang out before embarking on a day of wholesome hiking or degenerate day drinking depending on how you roll. On Sundays from May to October, this outdoor market is the perfect spot to grab some fresh produce and maybe even a few drinks before hitting the trails or the bars. Just be sure to pace yourself. I don't want you stumbling around with a basket of kale on one hand and a beer in the other. Looking for a place that seamlessly blends the past with the present, with its historic landmarks, unique shops and restaurants, and colorful atmosphere, this is a must-see destination for anyone exploring the city. Old Town. Founded way back in 1706 when your mom was born, this charming district is where it all began for the city. One of the most iconic landmarks is the San Felipe de Neri Church, a stunning example of colonial architecture that's been standing tall for over 300 years. But Old Town isn't just about history. It's also home to chic shops, local art, delicious new Mexican restaurants, and the world famous Albuquerque Museum. And by world famous, I mean Albuquerque famous. So if you're ready to experience the thrill of walking through a mall that's trying to convince you it's a historical district, head on down to Old Town. And for all you Breaking Bad fans out there, you can score some blue rock candy meth at the Candy Lady store. 
less than a mile away, get ready to taste your way through Albuquerque's trendiest food hall. Located just north of Old Town, this food lover's paradise boasts a plethora of vendors. With eateries offering everything from poke bowls to empanadas, it's like a food court on steroids. Sawmill Market New Mexico's diversity in food, culture, and art are on full display in Albuquerque's former lumberyard, which has been transformed into a 34,000 square foot food hall, outdoor gathering space, and community gathering hall. Let's spice up this list a bit and talk about one of the oldest modes of flight known to man. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to soar among the clouds, weightless and free? Well, at our next destination, you can get as close to that experience as possible without leaving the ground. At the Anderson Abruzzo Albuquerque International Balloon Museum. Discover how ballooning in 1783 marked the beginning of human aviation and the many subsequent breakthroughs in the field at the Balloon Museum. To this day, Albuquerque continues to play host to the world's largest annual ballooning event. Over 500 hot air balloons take part in the annual balloon fiesta, which takes place over the course of nine days during the first full week of October. What's that? You want to know how you can be one of those people? <laughs> then let's talk about Rainbow Riders Hot Air Balloon Co., a company that offers hot air balloon rides, because apparently the ground isn't dangerous enough for some people. Ah uh, yes, nothing says relaxing weekend like the constant fear of plummeting to your death. So if you're looking for a way to combine your love of heights with your love of sitting in baskets, then check them out. For those of you that don't know, the Sandia Mountains are a range of mountains that dominate the Albuquerque skyline. And you're probably saying, man, it would be so cool to see the vibrant city of Albuquerque from 10,000 feet up. Well, you're in luck, thanks to the Sandia Peak Tramway. So yeah, maybe the tramway was built in the 60s, a time when people thought smoking was healthy and asbestos was a great building material. But despite its age, the tramway is still a marvel of engineering with cables that are more reliable than your ex's promises. Even while the views from the tram up to the top are beautiful, they're difficult to appreciate when everyone is packed in there like sardines. However, once you step outside on top, you'll find miles of stunning cliffside scenery, hiking trails, and a restaurant open throughout the year. The views from the peak are so breathtaking, you'll almost forget about the vertigo-induced panic attack you had on the way up. Also, bring a jacket. That wind chill is no joke. Now let's head to the nature and recreational section of the video. You could start your outdoorsy day by grabbing some migas from the soon to be mentioned Frontier restaurant, or you can make a smarter choice with today's sponsor, Magic Spoon, a healthy cereal that tastes too good to be true. If you're like me, you check a second bag just to bring the world's best sugar-free cereal. I start my day off right with a bowl. The frosted flavors, my favorite. I may even just bring it with me to go on my adventure. No, Jacob. Not like that. That's better. Click the link below to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code VENTURE at checkout to get $5 off any order. Or go to magicspoon.com slash venture. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Click the link below and use the code VENTURE for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash venture to save $5 today. Now, back to the video. With breathtaking views and challenging terrain, the trails at this aforementioned mountain wilderness will have you sweating, cursing, and questioning your life choices in no time. But don't worry, the rewards are worth it at the Sandia Mountains. Let's begin with the South Piedra Lisa Trail, a strenuous climb located just 20 minutes from the heart of the city, where the urban sprawl meets the mountains. At 4.4 miles out and back and over 1,300 feet in elevation gain, this hike is perfect for those who like to torture themselves for fun, or just hates their life. Or you could take the Scenic Highway 536, commonly known as the Sandia Crest Scenic Byway, that climbs to the summit of the Sandia Mountains, leading you to several trailheads, like the Sandia Man Cave. This trail is just over a mile out and back and only has 200 feet in elevation gain. The trek to the top of Sandia Man Cave ends with a neat spiral staircase to the cave, which is actually a National Historic Landmark because of its signs of evidence of human use from 19,000 to 11,000 years ago. Neat! Oh, did I forget to mention there's no cell service either? I personally find that cutting off all access to help in an emergency really spices up a hike. 
the beautiful landscape that surrounds Albuquerque serves as a continual reminder to why so many individuals choose to make New Mexico their permanent home. And you don't have to go far from town to get some nature in your life. Just south of the Botanical Garden, you'll find our next destination, Tingley Beach. It's like a desert oasis, except instead of palm trees and crystal clear water, you get murky ponds and a whole lot of sand in your shoes. All jokes aside, it's a city park perfect for relaxing and having fun with the kids, complete with plenty of ducks and geese, paddle boats for rent, playground equipment, and picnic tables. If you want to get some hiking in, you can circle the Rio Grande Bosque and Tingley Beach Loop, a 1.5 mile loop that fits snugly between the beach and the Rio Grande, perfect for a stroll any time of year. As always, you can find helpful links and other information in the description below. Still staying close to the city, we have an archaeological site run by the National Park Service. It's like a giant outdoor art museum, except instead of paintings by dead white guys, you get to see carvings made by Native American people thousands of years ago, the Petroglyph National Monument. To see everything, you'll have to put in some hiking, and with the desert sun beating down, shade is hard to come by. The Volcanoes Trail is a 3.2 mile loop that gains over 400 feet in elevation and provides an easy climb for spectacular views in all directions. The even simpler Boca Negra Canyon Trail is a short out and back trail that offers fantastic views of the petroglyphs up close and personal, making it suitable for the whole family. Just remember, leave only footprints and take only selfies. Getting into road trip territory, about one and a half hours north of the city in the stunning New Mexico countryside is a trail that leads to a secluded hot spring with warm, mineral-rich waters suitable for a relaxing soak. So sit back and relax while I exploit this well-kept secret spot to thousands of people on YouTube, Macaulay Hot Springs. It's like a spa day in the middle of nature, if nature was a little bit steamier and more naked. However, in my personal experience, people tend to cover up. And the hot spring isn't so much steamy as it is just merely warm. The springs are at the conclusion of a 3.5 mile out and back trail that gains a little over 800 feet in elevation. Taking a hot sweaty hike with the promise of a warm spring at the end might sound counterintuitive, but trust me, it's worth it. What makes this next spot so special is that it combines the best aspects of a national park and a national monument. Here in the US, national parks tend to be larger and provide more recreational options, while national monuments tend to be smaller and focus on preserving certain characteristics. However, Bandelier National Monument has the best of both. Bandelier is truly a feast for your eyes, and possibly your stomach, if you're the kind of person who snacks on rocks. Many of the park's most visited trails run through Frioles Canyon, where visitors may see rock art, petroglyphs, and the ruins of ancestral Pueblo dwellings from the years 1150 to 1600 AD. The best way to explore everything the park has to offer is via the Alcove House Trail, a 2.6 mile loop with a modest elevation gain. Alternatively, the Sinkawi Ruins Trail is about 15 miles up the road if you're looking for some solitude on a busy day. Whether you're a history buff or an outdoor enthusiast, or just someone who enjoys sweating profusely, this place has got it all. You may be thinking, is there really that much to say about restaurants in a city in the middle of the desert? And the answer is a resounding yes, my friends. Let's start with some New Mexican soul food. Yeah, that's a thing. Because when you take two of the world's most flavorful cuisines and combine them, you get something truly special. Let's check out Nexus Brewery and Restaurant. This black owned hotspot is a favorite among locals and tourists alike, boasting a menu that's as bold and brazen as the beer selection. Definitely try the Cajun Chicken Chicharrones appetizer, made with hand cut boneless chicken thighs, breaded or gluten free, seasoned with Cajun spices and fresh cilantro, and finish off with the best chicken and waffles in the Southwest. And if you're more of a beer connoisseur than a foodie, fear not, cause their menu is packed with great craft beers, including their flagship beer, the Nexus IPA. Just remember that there's nothing that a heaping plate of comfort food and good company can't fix. At first glance, this next spot may sound like a place where you go to get your prescription filled, but nope, it's a restaurant. If you want to get a table on a weekend morning, you better be prepared to fight like it's the last avocado toast on earth at the pharmacy. Now, I didn't intend to cover two waffle related restaurants in a row, but we're not mentioning breakfast and dinner's delicious love child. No, we're just talking good old buttermilk waffles topped with, well, let's just say some interesting garnishes. Brie, Sure, why not? Sunny side up eggs? 
Okay, getting a little weird. Black beans and pico de gallo? All right, now we're really pushing the limits. But if you wanna keep things simple, you can always have some game-changing biscuits and gravy, breakfast burritos, or any other mix of sugar and carbohydrates you typically find in a good old American breakfast. So if you ever find yourself in Albuquerque in the morning wondering, where can I find huevos rancheros plopped onto a waffle? The pharmacy is the answer. Located in the heart of Albuquerque, this place has been serving up greasy goodness since the 1970s. They're open seven days a week from 5 a.m. to 12 a.m., cooking top-notch breakfast, burritos, burgers, and roasted green chili. Frontier Restaurant. For an appetizer, I recommend the green chili stew, which tastes even better when dunked with handmade tortillas. And when it comes to enchiladas, also known as spicy sleeping bags, I'm a polygamist. Cause why pick just one color when you can have both? Of green and red, that is. And lastly, finish off with their famous Frontier Sweet Roll. With so much sugar, it'll make your dentist's skin crawl. Next, we have an Italian eatery where you could practically smell the artisanal cheese from a mile away. A place where the pizzas are wood-fired and the wine flows like the Rio Grande. Serving up some of the freshest greens and the tastiest appetizers in town. Farina Pizzeria and Wine Bar. They have a great selection of pastas and appetizers, but I come here for the pizza, like the beloved fungi pie, with a mix of roasted portobello, shiitake, cremini, and oyster mushrooms, and other amazing toppings. Or try the Bianca, with mozzarella, ricotta, truffle oil, sage, artichoke hearts, and grana padano. For the health conscious, there are many gluten-free substitutes, and for those who don't give a crap about their bodies, might order the butterscotch budino, which features butterscotch pudding topped with caramel, sea salt, and cream fresh whipped cream. Whether you're on a romantic date or just trying to fill that existential void with carbs, Italian food is always a reliable source. Next, we have ramen. No, not that cheap sodium-packed stuff you lived off in college, but rather the type with savory broths, chewy noodles, and toppings that are like a tiny miracle in your mouth. At Albuquerque's best ramen shop, Oni. The shoyu ramen, made with the standard pork broth and toppings, is perfect for first-timers. But the weekly ramen specials Oni has are a true treat, with recent entries like their 24-hour cherry wood smoked brisket with red chili ginger noodles, or the Sweetgrass Farms braised beef shoulder and kimchi ramen. Mmm, and my god are the appetizers trying to steal the show. Here, enjoy this montage of all eight of them to some very uh, annoying dubstep music. <music> Lastly, we have the culinary equivalent of a mullet. We're talking about a restaurant that looks like a Texaco on the outside, but feels like a TGI Fridays and a dive bar had a love child on the inside. Words just can't explain. Monte Carlo Liquors and Steakhouse. Don't let the odd furnishings and sketchy backdoor fool you. This is still one of the best steakhouses in Albuquerque. Customers come for the prime rib Thursday through Saturday nights and the New York strip on Monday through Wednesday nights, both of which start at 5 p.m. There's also a few additional cuts as well, but the menu focuses on American classics too, like their amazing green chili cheeseburger. Cause you know, New Mexicans will just put green chili on anything. Well, not anything. Surely they wouldn't be crazy enough to put it on something as sweet and innocent as ice cream. Bruh. Look, I'm all for trying new things, but some lines should never be crossed. Mixing ice cream with hot green chilies is like putting ketchup on a sundae. It's just not right. For coffee, off of Central Avenue, there's a caffeinated oasis that serves all your standard coffee and espresso drinks, in addition to unique beverages prepared from their in-house roasted beans. Michael Thomas Coffee Roasters. Both the indoors and the gorgeous rear terrace with ivy and fountains are great for relaxing and getting work done. The pre-made foods and baked items are delicious, and you can even buy a bag of beans to take home as a souvenir. In the end, it's just a coffee shop, but they have quality beans and a good vibe. Look, it's time to break up your mediocre Starbucks routine and try this place out. For dessert, we have cookies that are so good, they'll make the cookie monster rethink his life choices. We have New Mexico's premier specialty cookie shop, with ska and reggae music playing daily, along with fresh baked all original recipes at Brood Boy Cookies. In addition to baked bite-sized hugs, they offer ice cream, milkshakes, and are the only milk bar in New Mexico, whatever that means. And if you can't make up your mind, the dozen assorted classic cookies is a safe bet. For $25, you'll get an assortment of all their classic favorites. 
two chocolate chip, two double chocolate, two sugar, two red velvet, one peanut butter, one oatmeal toffee, my favorite, one raspberry with chocolate chip, and one snickerdoodle. And you may be thinking, wow, this is perfect for me and my friends. But let's be real, you don't have any friends, and you're just going to eat all 12 of them by yourself. And that's okay, I'm here for you. For the nightlife and bar scene section of the video, let's start at this speakeasy style joint where the drinks are strong, the atmosphere is cozy, and the only thing you'll be smuggling out is a newfound appreciation for the art of mixology, the Copper Lounge. Here we have a cocktail lounge that was formerly a dive bar with a nice vintage vibe to it, but not in a hipster way, more in like a wealthy grandpa basement's way. But let's talk drinks, like the Paris Tokyo. Named after the Lupe Fiasco song, it's described as a globe trot with flavors from all over the world, with passion fruit, red chili, bell pepper, aquavit, and velvet falernum. Or try their ponch crema, which is basically like Venezuelan eggnog with rum, condensed milk, nutmeg, vanilla, and cinnamon. So if you're serious about checking out this joint, plan ahead, reserve a spot, and get ready for some seriously good cocktails. Ah, downtown Albuquerque. You can find some really fun places to hang out here with great drinks and lively crowds. You'll also find some places where you feel like you need to wash your hands after touching anything. But if you're feeling adventurous, then head on down to Anodyne. Unwind in style at this laid back pool hall, where you can indulge in mixed drinks in a selection of imported and domestic beer. The atmosphere exudes a relaxed and inviting vibe full of plants, soft lighting, and great music. No $15 cocktails like Copper Lounge here, just order your favorite go-to drink or grab a craft beer and shoot some pool. But let's change gears a bit and indulge in the delightful art of day drinking. That's right, next we have a woman and Native American owned brewery that's probably the only one of its kind in this country, serving up some of the finest craft beers in the Southwest, Bow and Arrow Brewing Company. These trailblazing beer makers are using their distinct flavors to offer a glimpse into their culture incorporating indigenous ingredients sourced from tribal-owned businesses. The brewery has a nice wooden interior and long tables lined up like a beer hall, creating a pleasant and friendly ambience, perfect for a day out with your friends. Try their flagship IPA, Scenic West, with ripe and citrus notes, or their Strawberry Amigo Sour, a strawberry shortcake flavor with vanilla, lemon, and lactose. This brewery also has rotating food trucks, trivia nights, and other events as well. Up next, we have Albuquerque's original shipping container marketplace and food hall, including the Santa Fe Brewing Co. Tap Room and nine other local vendors, providing something for everyone. Green Jeans Farmery. This is the ultimate hipster hangout. With everything from a brewery to a weed store, it's basically a one-stop shop for all your vices and cravings. You'll find several eateries serving pizza, burgers, pho, ice cream, and other delicacies, all housed in shipping containers, because apparently traditional buildings are just too mainstream. For our wine aficionados, in the last recommendation, it's time to pop the cork on this family-owned gem from New Mexico that's been producing some seriously good sparkling wines since 1984, Gruet Winery and Tasting Room. The Gruet family has some serious French roots, with founder Gilbert Gruet hailing from a champagne house in France. With their focus on Method Champenois sparkling wines and a small collection of still wines, they've earned the coveted praise of some of the nation's top sommeliers. And don't forget, when you're drinking wine, you're not just getting drunk, you're getting cultured. By clicking the join button on the channel page, you can now become a member and gain exclusive access to my Discord server. Not only will you be able to show support and help me create more awesome content, but you'll also have the opportunity to chat with me and other members of the community on Discord. Plus, you'll get to weigh in on what you want to see more of on this channel. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video. And while you're at it, comment which city I should do next down below.